The only way this place is gonna work is if do it. Get off your lazy ass and do it. Lazy I, ass. Yeah. I work 90 hours a week. I work a hundred then. Don't tell. <sighs> This is the same argument that they had last night. Do they like argue on the phone when they get home? And this argument is just the same argument that was from the other night? What's up guys? It's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today, we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's go check this out. Here we are guys, Sunnyside Queens. Jack's Ale House. What's your reaction? That's the location? Earlier they said this is remodeled. They chose that font after the remodel? That looks so bland. It looks like a neighborhood liquor store. There's nothing that says this place is exciting, dynamic, fun. It doesn't even look open. Like, where are the lights besides the sign itself? And the real shame is that it's on the corner, so it's a really good location too. John has placed surveillance cameras around the bar to capture the action and watch it live. Is that a deck back there? That doesn't seem like they're utilizing it too well though. You have an outdoor patio that you don't you turn on the lights. Outdoor patios are gold mines. Like they should be trying to attract a crowd out there. But instead all the lights are off. It doesn't even look like it's open for the bar patrons. You know what? You can use that deck four or five months a year here. Absolutely. So Jack's Ale House is owned by three brothers. Three brothers? Oh my god. This is gonna be one of those sibling owned bars, isn't it? There's John, he's the oldest brother and also a retired firefighter. He owns another successful bar and he invested the profits from that bar into this one for 7% interest. I, I wonder why he would do that. He already has a successful bar somewhere else, but he decided to join in with his other brothers to open this place. There's no chicken wings in here, are you kidding me? Blame it on me, blame it on me. You're being a don't order chicken ones. We have none. And whose fault is it? It's my brother Jimmy's fault. Let's get it! Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They're arguing like this in front of the guests, trying to figure out who's to blame for the chicken wing, like someone forgot to do the inventory? There's no reason for the bar patrons to hear this. Look at these guys screaming at each other. Bunch of hotheads. Welcome. My name's Christine, by the way. And there's Christine. She's Jimmy's wife. So a wife is also involved in this. Please don't tell me the whole family is running this place. There's Catherine. She's a bartender. She's John's daughter. Daughter? Oh my god. They're bringing... One of the bartenders is the daughter of one of the owners. Kristen. She's a bartender. She's Brian's wife. How many of their family members are working here? Like, this is already off to a bad start. I'll have three Guinnesses. Long Island Ice Tea. Harvey Wall Banger. What is it called? A Harvey Wall Banger. Harvey Wallman? Wallbanger. She doesn't know what a Harvey Wallbanger is. I mean, it's not that common these days. They heavily promoted it for um, Galliano, but you should at least have heard of it, that the name sounds familiar and you can look up the recipe somewhere. We don't have Galliano. Do you want something else? Uh, we'll take a Cosmo instead. Now is a Cosmo red or is it not red? Please don't tell me that they also don't know how to make a Cosmo. Harvey Wildbanger, yeah, it was a fad. It came and went. But a Cosmo, it's still a very commonly ordered drink. And there's George in the kitchen. He's your man, Vic. I only see one glove on you. And at that- Why is he wearing just one glove? How is that- <laughs> He's- You're touching Rami with one gloved hand and one ungloved hand. Like, what's even the point? Most contaminated parts of the hand and the most difficult part to get clean. We're gonna have them microwaving these kids. Chef Mike on the job. They're really gonna microwave that? There's no reason to have a microwave in the kitchen. Especially this is a quesadilla. It doesn't take that long to cook. Guys, all you guys come over here, come on. You want a shot? Look at Jimmy, drinking and taking shots. Why are they taking shots? There's nothing going on. What's the occasion? Have a shot, bro. Come on. No more, uh, no more shots. Enough. Animal. See, at least one of the brothers is being professional. They shouldn't be drinking at all. They're all owners, especially when you get wasted. How are you going to take care of the bar? Because I'm also assuming that these owners are also managing the floor. Keep on doing what you're doing, bro. About stacking beer and getting nice? That's what you're supposed to be doing. I get it done. Obviously, it's me, right? You sit there like a little <laughs> Catherine! Oh my god. These brothers. You guys are owners. You can't be acting like little kids in front of your guests. Cut him off. Cut him off. He's been drinking since 10 o'clock this morning, man. Do you understand you're being a right now? A hundred percent 
do you just, why are you doing this in front of guests? This is why <laughs> you shouldn't open a business with your relatives. Yes, it can work, but you guys grew up together. You guys know how each other's are. You have three hotheads right now fighting over random things like somebody forgot to order the chicken and now one brother's supposed to get cut off and understandably you shouldn't be drinking in the job anyways. Like what is going on here? Oh, people gotta be freaking out that these giants are going at it in the bar. This business failed because you! Please don't tell me they're gonna fight. How long have you been married? We've been together 20 years. Christine, why are you crying? He does not follow through sure. on what he's supposed to do. This bar should be a gold mine. They could be so much. <laughs> now you have the wife lecturing on one of the owners on what he's doing is not right. You don't need experience of owning a bar to know that you shouldn't be wasting your time arguing with the other owners slash your brothers and drinking on the job. It sucks! What do you want me to tell you? You're now cleaning the place, helping cook, bringing up beers and stuff like that. If you want the bar to get better, do some work. <laughs> you. Why? You're all in this together. You could continue to point fingers at each other's, but you guys are all gonna go down together. Like, can't you see this? Here we go! You ain't running Jimmy, oh, Jimmy, yeah. stop the break! He's here to tell us our problem, so let's listen to the man! To hell with it! <laughs> yeah, exactly, you're wasting his time. He's trying to fix this place, and all you guys are continuing is acting like little kids in front of guests. We have a major money issue, and I don't think that these guys give a about it. We are in so much what? What? You and I don't what? think you guys give what? a comes down That's to it. It's always money. I mean, he's the only one that has experience, like we saw before. He's running a successful bar, and sad thing is, you do have to know a lot about money. Like, people think bartending and owning a bar is super fun, but at the end of the night, you have to look at all the books, accounting, look at the labor costs, look at all your comps, see if there's a problem, you know, if there's a lot of do not likes that, you know, returns from customers. This is the boring stuff that lots of people don't know or don't want to know about owning a bar. And the places that I've worked at, you know, I have to do this computer admin stuff sometimes when I close. And it's not fun going home at like 3 in the morning after entering all this data while the rest of the bartenders got to have fun and are home already. But this is what keeps the business running. Oh yeah, but what happens when the doors close? Of course it's fine. Are closed? The doors are closed because of this. Everybody's pointing a finger. He wants to know what the problem is. I just told this is literally still going on on the next morning. Okay, yesterday they were drinking and it was getting kind of late, but you think that after a good night's sleep that they would be calmer? But no, they just keep arguing like this, like a bunch of kids. Even if they had experience, it's very hard to work with siblings and relatives and family members, especially when you're going down this spiral of just bickering. It's very hard to get out of it. How much have you put in, John? Close to 200. You want to sell the bar, sir? Yes. So you've already given up on your brothers. Well, I would say, yeah. He's given up on you guys. I mean, he's unfortunately the only one who has experience doing this. And he mentioned earlier he's gonna, he wants to cut his losses. And honestly, this is such a toxic work environment. I mean, this shouldn't have happened in the first place. These three brothers should not have opened a bar together. The only way this place is gonna work is if... Do it! Get off your lazy ass and do it! Lazy I, ass! Yeah. I work 90 hours a week! I work 100 then. Don't tell- uh, This is the same argument that they had last night. Do they like argue on the phone when they get home? And this argument is just the same argument that was from the other night? Like nothing is gonna get done here if you keep bringing up the same stuff. Like there's no progress right here. It's bad. I've been telling you this, but you don't listen. You don't take me seriously for some reason. I don't know why. I just told him last week I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done. Damn, the wife is giving up too. This is gonna be a hard one to turn around. I mean, you have three brothers that aren't getting along, and now even the wife wants out. Let's go, guys. You can fit as many people out here as you can in a bar. I mean, this is freaking money out this here. This Dude, out the patios, especially in New York City, like, why aren't they utilizing this patio? Especially when you draw a large crowd and people hear people chattering in the background, it makes people want to check out the bar. Like some of my favorite bars that I go to, I go to because of the back patio. Hey, Harvey Wallbanger. Awesome. What's this technique called? <laughs> Shaking and stirred. Yeah. So, 
that's not a real technique. Like, why even bother doing that? The customer can do the same thing just by stirring a drink around with a straw. No shaking. Yeah, yeah just so, more like that built drink. So one of the things that we always, always, always worry about when bartending goes is consistency. How is that? That's way off. That's like you have one drink that's twice as big as the other one. You have glass, so you can clearly see that something was wrong or missing here just by looking at the wash line. Who still needs a drink? More than half the room. Come on, let's go. I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes and they haven't even acknowledged me. Like, I don't even exist here. <sighs> when it gets busy, you can never stop greeting the guests. Even if they're really far, you could stay at a distance, be with you in just a second, or even like throwing a napkin down just to acknowledge that you saw them. Because imagine how long it takes to go up to somebody even if they do see them. So the first thing you do when the new guest comes in is to acknowledge them as soon as possible. It'd be quicker for me to just go to like Manhattan and get a drink right now. I need it to get us. I know, everyone needs to get us right now. Back here is getting to be a cluster of Christine, stop freaking serving them. Jimmy and... How many bartenders are working behind that small little bar? Earlier they said there's only two service wells, all right? You can have two people making the cocktails and maybe one person uh, taking care of the beer, but you don't need this many people behind the bar. It just gets into it. Everyone's just bumping into each other's. Christine are going at it with each other. Wow, you're freaking annoying right Stop now. it! Stop! You're stressing me out. Am I the only one that's Oh, dude, they just asked you to not yell. You're just pouring Guinnesses. Yeah, a proper Guinness pour is gonna take time and the guests, they're not gonna get mad while you wait for the beers to cascade, all right? See what other beers that other guests are trying to order and take care of that first because the Guinness is, is gonna take time and the guests expect that. Yeah, it's a mess, it's overwhelming. I'm outside dealing with all those people and I'm pushing stuff here but nothing's getting made. So I went back and did it myself. All I knew what I was doing and I did it. See, at this point, you need a, some kind of POS system or a ticket system so you don't have to have the servers trying to get the drinks themselves because more people behind that small little bar means that more people are going to be bumping into each other's. We have a bar that's so tight you can't move behind it. We don't have stations. We don't have systems. We don't have any ability to serve the guests. I mean, look at that. They have two bartenders on the same POS system. Brian, we have a first one. Hey, folks. How much your order? You know where these go? What does it say in the ticket? Why don't they, they need to travel with it? Oh my god! You have the tickets. You gotta look at the tickets to know where to run it. Otherwise, you have food that's sitting there getting cold. And what are you gonna do? Just keep auctioning it? Because if you do that, you're just gonna give the order to the wrong person. Time the guest gets it, it's cold and it's too late. We're going 20 minutes on a quesadilla! 20 minutes on a quesadilla. All you're doing is reheating it. You might need some time to build the crust on the tortilla, but that's about it. Everything else is cooked. You're just melting the cheese, reheating the chicken, forming the crust. Did he just take a shot? Oh my God, he's just going back to his old ways. This is literally just a day after him drinking and yelling at people behind the bar. And John just got here and the very next day, he's just already reverting back to his old ways. Jimmy's been drinking back here this entire time. Whenever you drink behind the bar, you're putting live- <gasps> Come on! You're literally, you're having a beer after you just took a shot? There's like no shame in this guy. I've been standing here with an empty glass for about What do you think of the guests when they're waiting 15 to 20 minutes for a drink and the bartenders are just pouring themselves drinks. Especially when that bartender is an owner. That kind of gives off, you know, a bad message for the guests. My brother, you cannot serve that. Come on, brother. Do. You know what to do? Are you sure? Oh my god. So not only are you doing 20 minute times for the quesadilla, you're also burning them. So now you gotta have to make it all over again. Only thing you have to worry about on a quesadilla is to not overcook it. It's already cooked. You're just reheating it and toasting it. Listen, stop talking. You guys are talking. Shut the no, up. I'm at the register. Oh my god. Please don't talk to your employees like that. But the customers should not be hearing this. It's not a good look. Sir, what else am I going to do? You're slowing the whole thing down. How many times has your husband said uh, A lot. So that's the old gym. It's still there, right? <sighs> Not only should you not be talking to your coworkers like that, definitely you shouldn't be talking to your wife like that, especially in front of strangers. This guy should not be behind the bar. He's just way too flustered, getting too stifled, and he just copes with his stress by drinking, which just makes it even worse. 
I made it clear to Jimmy this afternoon that he was to show discipline. Mr. And he's drinking some more. Like, this guy should not be behind the bar, all right? He wants to be a bar owner? Fine, but don't go behind the bar. This is not good for you. You hear me? Really you do. take another drink, I'll fire your ass in front of your brothers. That's the deal. Who the are you talking to? I'm talking to you. Is this really happening? A lot of people, they can, like, hold up an act for like a few days or something like you know you can tell them not to drink and they can probably do that for a few days tell them not to get angry or yell at the co-workers they can do that for a few days you couldn't pull it off so you're cursing your wife and your drink either he is leaving this bar now or i am jimmy get the out of here yeah at this point you're gonna have to cut him off this is not a good look like he's way too drunk can't control his emotions and especially because he's such a big guy he's probably also scaring away the customers so yeah they need to send him home this is not good oh. bye this is such bull he can barely walk and he's a big guy so he must have had a lot to drink it's not my 100 my fault i'm not leaving i'm going in Oh my god, you have customers booing him for coming back in here. Like, what are you trying to do here? Jimmy, get the f out of here! Oh! Are you kidding me? Dude, he's drinking more, spitting whiskey at his brother, acting like an idiot. Like, what does he think is gonna be accomplished by doing this? Now I'll leave! It's been a big night for us. Thank you, Jimmy. F you. What is wrong with him? Is he trying to make this business fail? Like, you have one brother who says that he wants to leave because of him, and his own wife even says that she wants to get out of this business because of him. Like, why are you even still here? You're the one who's causing this mess. Jimmy is a nightmare. And he can't control himself. It's as hard as you would work, and as hard as you might work, he is going to cause this place to fail. Yeah, that's a huge liability. I understand this is a stress test, but you should have come in prepared for this because that's the whole point. It's a stress test. All they ask for you is to not yell at people. And you couldn't do that. And he starts drinking, which just makes it even worse, makes him less able to control his emotions. He should have known that he couldn't handle this before this even started. He should have just stayed home. I shouldn't be sticking up for him, but he deals with stress a lot differently than a lot of people. He no, just no, needs no. help, I think. Yeah, he needs professional help. And being behind the bar, having access to alcohol like this, that's not good. This is dangerous, not just for the business, but also for himself. Like, saw the way he acted? He has no control over his own emotions, especially when he's drinking. Other are gonna have to sit his freaking ass down and straighten him out. I say that we talk this out with Jimmy tomorrow together. Okay? I like that. Nothing got accomplished. It's the same thing that happened on the first night. I'm just overwhelmed with my whole life. It's just 24 hours a day, seven days a week that I'm just getting bombarded, failing bar. I'm making my bills barely, working three jobs. I get home, my kid's like, daddy, daddy, daddy. <sighs> working three jobs. Stress at home, and you got stress at this bar. Just take care of things. Don't do this in a crowd where people can see you and just makes it look worse. If you still want to be owner, that's fine, but you <laughs> cannot manage a bar. You shouldn't be near a bar. This guy should not be near alcohol. This is spiciest grilled cheese sandwich you had ever seen in your life. And if you make it all the way to the end, you get the t-shirt. It starts out with the white American cheese. As you go a little further, goes pepper cheese. The Dude, that is so cool. I've never seen it like that. So the sandwich gets hotter and hotter as you progress eating it. Especially because it's like all the brothers worked in firehouses. So the the theme of using heat is part of the food. Yeah, I can definitely see that this is going to draw very good publicity. It starts off with the shot. You bite into the sandwich. You see how much of this heat you can take. And if you make it all the way to the end, and you don't touch the milk, you get the shirt. That is awesome. Oh, you can't touch the milk. That's cool. You get a shirt for this. <laughs> the time has come. On the count of three, turn around. Oh my Dude, that's cool. They made it look like a firehouse. And also kept the name too as well. Does this create reactions? Oh yeah. Look at the fire department door on the wall. 
You notice the doorknob? It's a nozzle, it sure is. Detail. That's cool. Those kind of nuances is what makes like ideas like this work. <laughs> Dude, that back bro looks sick. The fire truck. Let's go get the patio. <laughs> Jeez, that patio was so underutilized. Like they weren't even using it before. And now this looks like good enough that people are just gonna hang out here anyways, just for the back patio. This is a game from Wizard Media. And the name of the game is, you ready? Whip out your hose. <laughs> it's a waterless urinal. What? It's a video game using the urinals. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I've never seen anything like that. Okay, Jim. All right, let me just get this thing going. Oh, yeah. Get, get the window. You're a fireman. Get the fire out. <laughs> Aim that hose. Yeah, baby. Yeah. We can create. Re That's, <laughs> this kind of gross, but it's pretty funny, too. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.